Hi everyone. I was recently at an HR conference and I was fortunate enough to watch a keynote speech from John Timpson, who's the chairman of the family-owned retail chain of the same name. He later agreed for me to interview him and this video blog or vlog just reveals some of the highlights of what he shared. So Timpsons are the go-to people for key cutting and shoe and watch repairs and they've got about 1600 shops and over 4000 colleagues of which about 90% are, are customer facing. He said to me, we don't have people doing jobs that aren't related to what we do in the shops. You know, they're all there to support the people who serve the customer. And it's obviously working because annual sales last year moved pretty close to £200 million as the rollout of branches in Tesco and Sainsbury's car parks continued uh, apace. And this is up from uh, about £169 million a year a year before. Now, pre-tax profit, it surged from £13.5 million to £17 million over the same period, while operating profit grew from about 12 to 16 million. So maybe we can learn something from all of this. Now, some of you may have read John's book, Upside Down Management, which is all about the very different way they do things at Timpsons. And this is the upside down management model. And I was able to recount a story to John from another delegate at the conference who I met at one of the break periods. So she shared her story with John already, and he clearly remembered speaking to her. So she told me at the conference that uh, she'd had a very positive experience with her husband's belt involving one of the Timpsons London shops. Uh, it seems that uh, her experience mirrored everything you said, I said to John. And uh, she was also very impressed that he not only knew the shop uh, which had since closed, but she was even more amazed when he immediately remembered that the manager there had relocated to Paddington. It was like you knew every member of staff, I said, only to be reminded that at Timpsons they're called colleagues and not staff. So I told John that the delegate went on to say that she wouldn't shop anywhere else for the things they provide, plus she'd become a great advocate for his business. But more impressive was just how John seemed to remember you know, pretty much all of the details, uh, even though it was a while back. And he even remarked that that same manager was now in Balham, South London. Yeah, pretty pretty good recall. Anyway, at Timpsons, they only have two rules. Number one, look the part. And number two, put the money in the till. Just lovely, I thought. And so simple. You know, Timpsons is a private business, so I guess they can afford to be quirky and different. And how about this? The immense trust they extend to staff to settle complaints. And their approach to recruitment just beggars belief. You know, typically area managers run the recruitment interviews. Now, there's no process uh, as such. There's no checklist of questions. It's just a conversation. They just get the, the, the candidate to talk about themselves. And Timpson's high on personality using the Mr. Men scorecard, he said. This is in two parts. Now, John declared that this was absolutely essential for the way they do things at Timpson's. Uh, of course, I quizzed him about being concerned that unconscious bias might creep in. And his puzzled reaction told me I'd already broken one of Timpson's cardinal rules. Do not use management speak. He either genuinely didn't know what I meant uh, by unconscious bias, or he was just asking me to say it in a very much more everyday way. As another one of the Timpson policies is to actively recruit ex-offenders, I use the example of people's typical stereotyping of an ex-convict, although on reflection I wished I'd simply referred to his calling the scorecard Mr. Men instead of Mrs. Women. Anyway, John seemed to sidestep the whole question by saying that the Timpson approach concentrates the mind on personality and takes you away from anything to do with their CV. It works if you've got the right people doing the interviewing. It takes one to know one, he said. Well, having said all that, John did recognise that some people are used to judging others. You know, they tend to, to use this, this, this scorecard with a 9 or a 10 he said, on the whole, we don't have people like that. If we have them, we, we just say goodbye to them. Now, their approach to letting people go just seems about as maverick as their approach to attracting them, but you can't deny it seems to be working. Every month, they make at least one colleague's dream come true, just like Scylla Black used to in her Surprise Surprise program. One month, it might be paying for them to visit a long-lost family overseas. Another month, buying someone a dog. You know, a lot of these ideas came from John himself. So what about this surprising, yet at the same time, innovative idea they have to deliberately recruit ex-offenders? After all, there's not a lot of competition 
for candidates in that demographic. Um, starting in 2004, after a prison visit by the MD James Timpson, they established the Timpson Foundation to not only give uh, ex-offenders a job, they provided funds to set up home and to get re-established in society. Of course, the same Mr. Men interview process is used. Timpson still looked first and foremost for personality. And within three years, they'd interviewed 100 prisoners and employed 24. Now nearly 10% of their workforce are ex-offenders. And it's interesting to observe that while the national average rate for re-offending after leaving prison without a job is 61%, the rate falls to 19% for those who have a job. Remarkably, though, the re-offending rate for those who get a job with Timpsons drops significantly to just 3%. And this is particularly relevant as the recently published report from the Parliamentary Work and Pensions Committee found that half, 50% of more than 1,800 surveyed employers wouldn't consider offering a former offender a job, often citing concerns around skills or capability and reliability, as well as potential damage to the public image of the business. Rumours and myths also play a part in discouraging potential employers, the report found. All in all, it was a refreshing look at a simple management and leadership philosophy. That said, and judging by some of the shaking heads in that conference audience, I suspect some of the Timpson Way was a step too far for some of the larger institutions present. So I invite you to share your reactions using the comments box below. Thanks very much for watching.